One of the primary benefits of virtualizing radio access networks, or RANs, is that RAN functions no longer require special proprietary hardware to run and can instead be run on standard servers. Joining me to discuss the implications of VRAN is Vince Carella, Director of Sales in the Network and Communications Sales Group at Intel. Welcome, Vince. Can you tell us a little bit about your role at Intel? Sure. I'm uh, Vince Carella, and as you stated, I'm the Director of Sales for our Network and Communications space. I've been with Intel 25 years and held various technical and sales management roles focused on network infrastructure, communications, 4G, 5G, wireless technologies, cloud and data center. And today I actually manage a team of account executives and industry technical specialists responsible for evangelizing network transformation solutions and converged edge technologies at our tier one communication service providers. And this includes both telco and cable operators. And uh, my team really works in a consultative capacity or what I call an influencer role We develop relationships with business unit leaders or think of lines of business to understand the unique challenges. We work with them to create solutions using Intel's products and technologies, creating the pool for our ecosystem partners like HPE. And we spent the last decade enabling virtualization from the core to the access edge. We worked with the carriers from early pilots to trials to full-scale deployments ensuring we had system optimization, operational efficiency, and lower total cost of ownership. So Vince, you and your team are in the field speaking to communication service providers in the surrounding ecosystem on a daily basis. So what are your thoughts on VRAN? Yeah, so as I stated earlier, we spent the last 10 years virtualizing environments from core to edge. RAN is that last piece of the network and virtual RAN is starting with 5G, so it's getting a lot of attention. Everyone is really hungry for the benefits or the promise 5G brings. In addition to virtualizing the RAN, we're also going back and codifying the network we just spent the last 10 years virtualizing, and we're, and we're codifying it from the core all the way to the edge. Uh, the 5G network will be built on cloud technologies and architectures, and services will be delivered in a cloud-like environment. But uh, let's pause a minute and talk about really the big picture. Uh, these, we're in the middle of a transition. And as you know, these transitions really do take five to 10 years. They do not happen overnight. Uh, VRAN has a different set of operational requirements that everyone needs to absorb, understand, and adapt to into their business models. On the surface, they may sound simple. Replace purpose-built appliances with general purpose open compute platforms and virtualize the RAN software on them but that's not a reality. Um, It's not what's really expected. What they're really looking for is, how do I get an open and flexible general purpose platform that provides the same level of performance, power consumption, and price as the highly specialized and optimized appliances of today? So now we deal with two major complexities that we have to deal with. First is disaggregation. While it provides innovation and flexibility, it also brings a question who integrates the components to create the solution, who guarantees the performance, is it the operators themselves, is it the network equipment providers, the independent systems integrator, do they really have the skill to do that, right? So this is one of the biggest operational risks associated with VRAN deployments that my team at Intel works to solve. Uh, The second is looking at management and automation. Think provisioning, upgrading, and managing the distributed nodes, it's complex. You got the general purpose hardware, you got the operating system, you've got the containers or the service deliveries that are gonna happen on this. There's other software tools needed to come together. And given the scale of the edge, the management process needs to be, op- uh, needs to be automated. Uh, VRAN large scale deployments with management automation is quite challenging, but we do have operators that are several years into this transition. And, you know, there's always trailblazers who lead the way and the others who await to see how the industry plays out. That said, a virtual architecture is the path forward. The question for everyone is, how do we go from where we are today to a future where we all capture the value of a cloud architecture? So as you mentioned, we're in the middle of this transition that needs to bring multiple components together. How is Intel jumping in to help? Yeah, let me start with Intel and also bring in one of my partners to elaborate on how how we're jumping in here. First, we're bringing 
FlexRAN reference architecture. This provides the industry with a ready-made, field-proven platform for VRAN services and network innovations. We unleash the ecosystem by providing the tools, the software, and the platform, making it easier for developers to deliver innovative VRAN offerings. Next, we work with leading industry consortia driving new innovations, including 3GPP, TIP, and the ORAN Alliance. Um, then we bring in Intel Network Builders, where we have hundreds of companies working to deliver VRAN on a global scale and enable faster time to market for VRAN solutions. And then we bring Intel Select Solutions. We work with the ecosystem partners to offer a pre-integrated, tested, and proven solution that reduces the complexity and time requirements for operators to bring virtualized RAN services to the market. And of course, Intel third generation Xeon scalable processors. We codename it in uh, Ice Lake internally here. It has software instruction set enhancements such as AVX 512, software based RAN and cloud native architecture and allows for software enhancement and upgrades. As I said, we do not do this alone. It takes a strong partner to make this happen. And I'm gonna talk about HPE, who's been a really strong partner with us from, from the start in virtual RAN. Intel and HP are working to enable carriers and the ecosystem alike. We have proven track record of not only deploying, but sustaining deployments. Intel and HP are a few years into deploying VRAN at one of the world's largest tier one operators. And there's been lots of learnings for Intel, for HPE, the operator, and really the broad ecosystem. And as a follow on to these deployments, HP and Intel partnered on the Verified Reference Configuration, or VRC, for VRAN. That can be deployed with HPE ProLiant DL110 with third generation Intel scalable processors, as well as Intel Ethernet adapters and accelerators. This program reduces the risk and complexity for our communication service providers, accelerates the deployments, and enables a reference configuration for faster ecosystem adoption. The verified reference configuration program really equals faster ROI for the industry. So I said a lot there, so let me summarize this in three quick bullets. First, virtualization is coming to the industry and deployments are already well underway. Two, Intel is investing in a big way to drive successful op for operators and the broad industry, and HPE is a key partner in this effort. Lastly, Intel and HPE verified reference configuration is a critical program that is in market already and is currently being leveraged to accelerate virtualization for the RAN at many operators around the world. Well, Vince, thank you for sharing your insights on VRAN with us here at Telecom TV. Thank you. Yeah.